In the last lecture, we learned how a structural directive works behind the scenes. We learned what is the use of asterisk before a structural directive name and what does Angular do behind the scenes when it finds an asterisk before a directive name. So we learned that when we use a asterisk before a directive name, behind the scenes, Angular creates a template. It wraps the view of that structural directive inside that template and it moves the structural directive on that template like you can see here. Now let's go ahead and let's create our own custom structural directive. So what we are going to do is we are going to create a structural directive which will work just like ng if directive. So when we use ng if directive on an HTML element or a component to that ng if we assign a TypeScript expression and that TypeScript expression should return a Boolean value. Now when that expression returns true this ng if adds the element on which we have used it to the DOM. But when the expression returns false, in that case, this ng if removes the element on which we have used it from the DOM. Okay, so we are going to implement a structural directive which will do the same thing. Now, creating a structural directive is very similar to creating an attribute directive with some minor differences. Okay, so let's create our custom structural directive. For that, I am going to use Angular CLI. So currently I am in component directives folder. Here, let's type this ng generate command and here we want to generate a directive and let's call this directive if. Let's press enter. So this directive has been created and you can see there are two files which has been created for this directive. If directive.ts and if directive.spec.ts. Let's delete this spec.ts file here. And let's go to this if directive.ts file. So here we have a class called if directive. And the selector for this class is app if. So what we want is we should be able to use this app if directive like ng if directive. Now we have learned that an attribute directive changes the look and behavior of an element on which we use it. But a structural directive manipulates the DOM by adding or removing element from the DOM on which we have used that structural directive. Now, when we add or remove an element from the DOM, we add or remove it at some place in the DOM, right? So, in order to create a structural directive, we need to get two things. The first thing is what to remove. And the second thing is from where to remove. Now, when we use an attribute directive on an HTML element, like we are doing here, in that case, in the constructor of that directive, we get a reference to that element. And we need that reference in case of structural directive as well. But in case of structural directive, along with the element on which we have used this structural directive, we also need the container inside which that view is present. So for example, let's go to our app component.html file and here let's comment this template and let's uncomment this HTML. And from here, let's comment this else part. Okay, I will just keep it for your reference. And from here, let's also remove this else part from this ng if. All right, so here we are using this ng if directive. Now, what we want is we want to use this app is directive just like ng if directive. So, this asterisk will tell Angular that this is a structural directive. So, here for this directive, this div is the view. So, we want this view in our constructor so that we can manipulate it. So Angular will inject that view into this constructor as its first argument. So let's call this parameter template, the first parameter as template, and it is going to be of type template ref. And this template ref is of generic type. So for now, let's specify any here. And in order to use this template ref, we also need to import it from Angular Go. Okay, so this is the first argument which we will receive for this constructor. 
Now remember that this template is nothing but the view on which we have used our structural directive. Now in the last lecture we learned that when we use an asterisk before a structural directive, behind the scenes Angular creates a template like this. Let me uncomment this code here. Okay, and again let's comment this part. And let's remove this ng if from here. Okay, so this HTML can also be written as this HTML. So here you will notice that this view has been wrapped within this ng template. Okay, so this view is now present inside this ng template. So we also want to get a reference to this template. And it is this template from where we will add or remove the view. And we are going to get a reference to this template as the second parameter of this constructor. So let's call this second parameter view container. And it is going to be of type view container ref. Okay, so once again, this view container is the container inside which the view will be added or removed. And this template parameter is going to store the view itself. Okay, so don't get confused with the name. Remember that the first parameter of this constructor is going to store the view, the view on which we have used the structural directive. And the second parameter is the container inside which we will add or remove the view. All right. Now, in order to make these two parameters available for this entire class, let's use a private keyword in front of them so that behind the scenes, a private property for this class will be created with the same name. All right. So this is the first step. So here we have what to add or remove and from where to add or remove. Now let's go ahead and let's create an input property for this directive. And let's call this maybe display element or let's call it display view. And let's decorate this property with at input decorator. And in order to use this at input decorator, we also need to import it from Angular Co. Now let's also use a setter on this property. So this setter will allow us to use this property like a method. And then we can add some logic to set the value for this property. Now this property is going to receive a parameter. Let's call it condition. And this is going to be of type boolean. Because here to this directive, we will assign a boolean value or we will assign an expression which will return a boolean value. And we are going to receive that value as the parameter for this property. Now inside this property, let's write an if statement. And inside this if statement, let's check the condition. So if the condition is true, in that case, we want to add the view in the DOM. Now, where do we have the view which we want to add into the DOM? We have that view inside this template parameter. And where do we want to add this view? We want to add this view inside this view container. So let's first get access to that view container. So here, let's say this dot view container. And on this, we have a method create embed view. So this create embed view method will create or embed a view inside this view container. Now, which view do we want to embed inside this container? We want to embed the view which we have inside this template parameter. So here, let's say this dot template. Okay, so if this condition is true, we are embedding this view which we have inside this template parameter inside this view container. And again, this view container is nothing but this template. All right. Now, if this condition is false, 
then we want to remove the view from the DOM. For that, let's write else condition. And inside this else, let's again access this view container. For that, let's say this dot view container. And from this view container, we want to clear the view. For that, we can use this clear method. And with this, our app if directive is ready to use. So let's go ahead and let's bind this display view property on this div. So instead of using App if let's use this display view. Okay, and let's also comment this HTML here. Now let's see what happens here. So, what we want is when we are using this display view, it should add this view in the DOM if this display property returns true. And if this display property returns false, then we want to remove this view from the DOM. Okay, so let's go to app component class. And initially, let's set the value of this display property to true. That means this view should be displayed in the DOM. But let's see what happens. Let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. And we should have an error here. And you can see that that div is not being displayed here in the web page. Now let's open developer console. And here you will notice that we have an error can't bind to display view since it isn't a known property of div. So what is happening here is we are using this display view property and this display view property is present inside this if directive. But how will Angular come to know that it has to look for this property inside this if directive? Since we have not used the selector of this if directive on this div element, Angular is looking for this property on this div element. But this div element does not have any property called display view. And that's why we have this error because it is looking for this display view property on this div element. So to tell Angular that it has to look for this property on this if directive, we can use the selector of this directive on that div element. Okay, so here let's use that selector. Let's save the changes now. Let's go to the web page. Let the page load. And still we are getting the same error. So in case of attribute directive, when we use the input property of the attribute directive and when we use the selector of that directive, it was working as expected. Okay, so this approach will not work for structural directive. Now let's try another thing. So let's go to this if directive. And here, let's provide an alias for this display view property. So let's use this app if as an alias for this display view property. And since we have specified an alias, now we cannot use this property. We cannot bind this property. So let's remove this display view from here. And now let's use this asterisk on this app if. Let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. And now you can see it is working. Okay, so now that div is being displayed in the web page. Now let's go ahead and let's set the value of this display property to false. Let's go to the web page. In that case, that div should not be displayed because now we are assigning false to this app if directive. Okay, so this display property is set with the value false and that, that's what we have assigned to this app if directive. And when the value is false, that false will be assigned to this condition. Okay, so here it will check if the condition is true. No, the condition is not true here. So the else part will be executed. And in the else part, we are clearing the view. But when we will click on this button, here you can see we are binding this click event with this method. And in this method, we are setting the value of this display property to true. So when we will click on that button, that display property will be set to true and that will be assigned to this app if in that case, this div should be displayed in the web page. Let's see that. Let's go to the web page. So initially when the page loads, that div is not being displayed. Now let's click on this show notice button. And when we click on this show notice button, in that case, this div is being displayed here. 
So now our app if directive is working just like ng if directive. Now what we can also do is we can use the selector name as the property name instead of specifying an alias for that property name. So now the property name is same as the selector name. So now we can remove this alias from here. And still our app if directive should be working as expected. Okay, so if I go to the web page, if I click on the show notice button, it is displaying the div. And initially when the page loads, that div is not visible. So in this way, we can create a structural directive in Angular. Let's try to use this app if directive on other HTML element. So let's go ahead and let's create a paragraph element here. Inside this, let's say this is a demo paragraph. And on this P element, let's use our app if directive. And since this app, if it's a structural directive, we also need to use an asterisk before it. And to this, let's assign a Boolean value. So let's assign an expression here, a comparison expression. So let's say 10 greater than 5. So this 10 greater than 5 will return true. In that case, this app if will display this paragraph in the web page. Let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. And you can see that paragraph is being displayed in the web page. Now let's change this condition to 10 less than 5. In that case, this expression will return false. And in that case, this app if will not display this paragraph in the web page. Let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. And now that paragraph is not being displayed in the web page. So our app if directive is working just like ng if directive. So this is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.